Welcome to the Rise and Grind Workshop. If you're new here, my name is Ryan, and yes, we're doing another Ultimate Unboxing and Overview. However, today, this piece of machinery that is hidden right here inside of this large box could potentially change and have a massive impact on your life. So now would be a proper time to thank the amazing team over there at FilterBox. Not only are we now an official affiliate for the FilterBox brand, they were nice enough to send us out this brand new unit. And if you're already familiar with the FilterBox brand or even the Expand X series, take a look at this model. This is gonna be their brand new XF2 series. So if you've seen any of my past unboxings, buckle up and grab that popcorn. You know we're gonna dive into this thing and give you all the details. Starting out, this came in two boxes. This is box one of two. The total shipping weight on this item between both of these was about 675 pounds. And as you can see, this thing came on a pallet. It also has a nice cardboard wrapping around the entire box. But most importantly, it's got the nice bands or straps wrapped around this entire unit. We're gonna go ahead and get the scissors out and start cutting this after I get you some overall dimensions of this unit and box two of two, of course. Now, if this is your first time ever receiving a large freight item like this, here's a couple pro tips for you. Once you've selected and purchased your item, the amazing team over at FilterBox is gonna get in contact with you and provide you with all the proper shipping information. This is gonna be coming freight. Once this unit has arrived at its port hub or destination, that shipping carrier is gonna reach out to you. So please keep in mind, once FilterBox has sent out this unit, it is now in the hands of a third-party freight company, and here's my fair warning to you. Most of them, if not all, they just really suck. So at the end of the day, if you have a bad experience, please just remember, this has nothing to do with FilterBox. One of the easiest ways to ensure your delivery goes as smooth as possible, once the carrier receives this package, they're gonna reach out to you. Simply work with them and make sure you guys can arrange a date and time and you can have the proper equipment available. They will provide you with a curbside delivery and this thing came with a lift gate. The driver simply dropped this down. He had a nice pallet jack with him and he wheeled this right inside of my garage. I have my own detached workshop and my own pallet jack and I wheeled that back here into my workshop. And that's why I highly recommend if you guys have some water or snacks, do your best job to be really polite to these freight drivers. They're busy on the road all day long dealing with irate drivers and then dealing with irate customers that want white glove delivery service. If you didn't pay for that, they're not gonna do it. But if you're very nice to them and butter them up, kindness goes a long way. First measurement's gonna come in 40 inches, 48 inches. Our total height on the pallet, 47 and a half inches. 40 inches, 48 inches. And we're working with, from the bottom of the pallet, 32 to the top of box number two. Well, I don't know whether I'm happy or sad. I don't get to break out my hammer and destroy a crate. And let's be honest, this beats taking apart a crate any day of the week. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel like I just got the potato chip effect. That was all box. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. This right here is the bottom. Over there in the smaller box, that's gonna be the components that are gonna go on top. Let's go see what's inside that box. And now for a quick intermission, I'm gonna go make my five-year-old's day. He's gonna get a cardboard castle. Matter of fact, he's gonna get two of them. Be right back. Now with the costume removed, you can clearly see this was secured down to a pallet, nice and secure. We're just gonna go ahead and cut these straps right here and continue getting this thing unboxed. Now that we got the base on the floor, you're gonna have four locking casters on the bottom and my wife was able to come out here and help me muscle that out onto the floor. This is an absolute thing of beauty. So again, big thank you to the team over there at FilterBox. I personally have been wanting one of these filter boxes in my own workshop for quite some time. I get reached out to a lot of times by you guys wondering, hey, if we're inside of a basement or we wanna go somewhere where we have an industrial building and we don't have the option to vent our laser engravers outside of a window, what do we do? So a little bit later in the video, we're gonna go over all the features on this and talk about how you'd utilize a system in a scenario like that. Let's go ahead and move on over to the top side and finish unboxing. So 
So clearly if you're reading, this is their brand new Expand XF2. And, and this is why if you are truly interested in protecting your lung health and the longevity of being around to provide for your family, you're really gonna reach out to FilterBox and speak with somebody. You're gonna tell them what type of laser engravers you have inside of your workshop. And they're gonna go ahead and recommend a machine based on your needs and demands in your laser engraving shop. And as a bonus feature, if you guys do any type of UV printing or welding, they also have their own series of filter boxes that are designed to accommodate those industries as well. Now, the reason I am really excited for this Expand series, you heard me mention this unit came with two blowers. This unit can be shipped out with one blower, two blower, all the way up to six blowers. As you guys know, we have a wide variety of laser engravers here inside of the workshop, and we are gonna be able to use this one Expand XF2 to handle all of our exhaust needs here in the workshop, everything from our UV lasers, fiber lasers, CO2 laser engravers, and even our diode lasers. So we're making good progress unboxing this. It's very straightforward and simple. This unit right here looks like it has a lid. I'm gonna take this lid off, and then we've got two filter boxes right here. Those are gonna get mounted on top of that filter box, and then we're gonna start going over all the details of this unit and why you need one of these in your workshop like today. And no, we are not making honey. You're gonna notice this says number one and number two, and we have another base down here. So at this point, you're now gonna start needing to remove these filters out of the stack. And again, just pay attention to the orientation. We have one on top, two on the bottom, and then again, we have the base down there. So here's a pro tip. I left that quick montage in there just so you can see how dumb I am. These are clearly handles. You do not need to grab both sides or this side and try to muscle that out. Simply remove this little brace, and then now you can grab these handles and remove it like a normal human. And because I'm your typical male and have not glanced at that manual yet, I'm paying attention to the same orientation. I'm simply moving these over there onto the ground. That way I can get this big pallet and pallet jack out of the way. Then we're gonna glance at that manual and get this thing assembled correctly. And these are not light. So these light little bastards, these are what you call gas filters. And you'll notice this is segmented into four different quadrants. Go ahead and start placing these filters in each little quadrant. Now, I don't know how much of an official difference this will make, but in my years of putting things together, I do have that orientation. You'll see number three, number three. Let's move on to the pre-filter and the filter. So now with the gas filters in place, we're gonna go ahead and install the remaining filters. You're gonna look for filter number two, and this filter right here is gonna be the HEPA air filter. And you're simply gonna bring that over here and drop that on top of your gas filters. It can only fit in one way. Next up is cartridge number one, and this is the pre-filter cartridge. Go ahead and place number one on top of number two. You should have removed two of these in the disassembly process. Go ahead and place those back on top. So pro tip, when you're stacking your cartridges, you're going to make sure these straps are dangling off to the side. They're not pinched anywhere. Make sure everything is nice and square and perfectly level. We're gonna go ahead and get the hood put on top of that, and then I'm gonna show you how to put these safety straps on the side. Like a glove. So with the lid properly secured in place, go ahead and grab your first strap. There's a detent lever, go ahead and press that down, and that'll give you the slack that you need to get up here. You're gonna go ahead and place this on that little hook, and then go ahead and grab the excess cord and just gently snug that down. Don't make it too tight just yet. Make sure you get all four sides connected, then you can give it a quick tightening. If you're new here, some of you may or may not know, but I've been laser engraving close to 20 plus years, and I have never had the opportunity to work with a nice HEPA filter filtration box inside of a workshop. I've seen these at the trade shows, and I've seen these equipped in some really nice sign shops as well. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the purpose of why you should be adding a filter box to your workshop. As we touched on earlier, this is their new Expand XF2 model, and we have two brushless blowers installed in this unit currently, and it's expandable all the way up to six blowers. 
And this unit right here is the Omtech Pronto 40, which is a 90 watt CO2 laser engraver, one of the many CO2 lasers we have here in the workshop. At the end of the day, you are firing a high powered laser beam into a variety of materials like leather, acrylic, and wood. And those nasty fumes that you see generated inside of your laser engraver can be broken down into two components, and that's gonna be VOCs, which is volatile organic compounds, as well as respirable dust. So the primary purpose of a laser fume extractor like this filter box is to take those laser dust particles and fumes and recirculate them back into the shop with purified air, which is gonna create a nice, clean, and safe work environment. And one of the major problems with respirable dust, it's something the naked eye can't see. They're usually smaller than less than 2.5 microns, which means those can get deep down into your lungs and cause a lot of long-term health issues. And guys, when sourcing a filter box for your shop, you cannot put a price on the longevity of your health. Filter box only uses high performance HEPA filters tested at H14, which means 99.99 at 0.03 microns. In layman's terms, what that's telling you is this is recirculating almost pure clean air back into the workshop. Your lungs will love you for this. So again, if you live in a region where you have extremely cold weather, you're down in a basement, and you have no way to get these fumes outside of your workshop, this is really the industry standard in the way you should go. I can't say enough good things about the FilterBox XF2. It'll be perfect for your workshop if you find yourself in any one of those situations I just mentioned. Well, now that we have the FilterBox set up, you know exactly what it is and whether you should be looking into one of these. Let's go ahead and get some power applied to this unit. All we have left to do is run our extraction hose over to the laser and plug this thing in. Now, depending on where you're placing your filter box in your workshop, you might need a longer hose. They do supply you with a hose, but for me, I wanted one a little bit longer. And once again, this is just a six inch hose with a hose clamp. Go ahead and install that on the top side of your filter box. Now that we have the extraction hose mounted to the top side of the filter box, we've moved to the back side of the Pronto 40. Our extraction port is on the back center. Let's go ahead and get that connected as well. We are just about ready to apply power to the filter box and calibrate it. Since I mentioned the word calibration, here's something very important to go over. You're gonna notice that we have our six inch hose on the top of this unit and we've ran it over to our Omtech Pronto 40. Since this is our first initial startup, we're gonna to need to calibrate this system. I want you to locate the two casters in the front and go ahead and lock those into position. Once you have your filter box set in place, you don't wanna move it around. The system is gonna calibrate it based on where it's sitting and how many bends or flexes you have in your hose and how long that hose is. Since we're talking about calibration and powering the unit up, this is something easily overlooked. This Pronto 40 did come equipped with a smart card and its own external inline fan to extract those fumes out. Depending on the make and model you have, you might have an onboard compressor on your laser engraver. You're gonna to wanna to remove the stock extraction fan prior to hooking it up to your filter box. That's going to greatly increase the life of your filters on the filter box system. The Pronto 40 did have a smart card and an external fan, so that's why you didn't see me remove any fans. We were able to just directly plug straight into the filter box. I also want you to locate the main power switch down here on the bottom of the filter box. You wanna make sure this is in the off position prior to applying power to the unit. Now that we've got everything plugged in and this is turned off, we can go ahead and flip that switch on. And now our digital display is showing us that we have power to the unit. Go ahead and follow the on-screen directions and it says calibration required, press OK to start. It is now running the calibration process. Now I'm not sure if you can hear that thing running behind me, but the manual states the calibration process could take about two minutes. It definitely started out on a lower speed and it's gradually increasing that fan speed. Pretty cool process. Calibration is now complete. That took less than a minute. And guys, this thing may look big and scary, but honestly, one of the quickest and easiest things we've set up here in the workshop. Calibration was completely seamless and simple. Right now, my unit shows it's at 30% power and it is on manual mode. You guys can go ahead and refer to that manual for some different settings, but for right now, let's go ahead and run a test and see how that's working. So we went ahead and loaded up some three millimeter true flat wood. We're gonna go ahead and raster engrave and do a vector cut on this thing. 
The filter box is in manual mode. And again, this does have a smart card so the air is not gonna kick on once the laser engraving job starts. We're gonna have to physically make sure the filter box is turned on prior to the laser engraving. So obviously it's very hard to capture this with the lid closed and like the old Emerald Agassi used to say, I really wish you guys could have smell-o-vision. I've been engraving for a very long time and I know that very distinct smell of what happens when you start raster engraving on this Baltic birch. And I gotta say right now I don't smell or see any fumes in the workshop. I'm really excited to see how this plays out. Boom, so take a quick look at that. This is three millimeter true flat. That engraved incredible. And I gotta hand it to the engineers over there at Filterbox. They really knocked it out of the park when it came to the decibel levels. I know a lot of you are looking at this big filter box thinking, oh man, how loud is that thing? And you guys know we've used a wide variety of different types of blowers here in the Rise and Grind workshop. And this filter box claims 67 decibels. And that was extremely quiet while running that laser engraver. And even though this unit is only equipped with two motors, those are brushless motors, and those are putting out 470 CFM. Now, earlier I did make a funny joke about Emerald Agassi and the smell of vision but guys, I honestly couldn't demonstrate to you the fact that you can't smell anything. I've been laser engraving for quite some time, and I am very familiar with any time a laser engraver strikes a certain material. And when I ran that This Is God's Country keychain, over there on that true flat. We had minimal dust inside of that laser engraver. I couldn't see anything here inside of the workshop and honestly, I couldn't even smell it. I'm honestly very impressed with this unit. So now that we have our Omtec Pronto hooked up to the filter box, we did talk about our fiber laser sitting over here on the left side of this filter box. And this is one of the reasons we went with the XF2. We're able to expand this as our workshop grows. In the following videos that I produce, I'm gonna show you how to put a Y adapter on here with some blast gates, and you could use this filter box to either control just your fiber laser fume extraction, your CO2 laser fume extraction, or because we do have the two brushless motors on here, we can leave both blast gates open, run our CO2 laser and our fiber lasers, and let the filter box take care of all of that filtration. I'm really excited to have this XF2 here in the workshop. My lungs are really gonna appreciate that moving forward. And if you guys have any additional questions, please reach out to me or contact Filterbox Direct. And if you guys mention the Rise and Grind workshop as a bonus, they're gonna tack on an additional year warranty. So you're gonna be getting a two year warranty by mentioning the Rise and Grind workshop. And as always, if you guys have any additional questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and drop a comment down below and we will catch you on the next video.